was the kingdom of the Amazons. By the tenth winter of her life, she was very capable. But the most important thing was that she was already quite able to defend herself. Of course, she was still unable to face an adult warrior. Although, considering these arrows, it is still unclear who would emerge victorious in a battle. The girl smiled and dipped the tip into a small container. This poison will make her arrows deadly. From the Legends of the Amazons It is unlikely that the little Amazon could have imagined that her existence would become such a great mystery for her distant descendants. For the next three millennia, legends will be told about her and the members of her tribe. The theme of a woman warrior, especially in the western regions of Kazakhstan, was very much alive at the beginning of the 20th century. But what nation did this ancient sisterhood belong to? Were they mythical creatures or real people? How were the men actually treated? And where should one look for an exclusively female kingdom? The Valkyries of the Steppe. A detailed story. How did the Amazons end up in Cappadocia? Many myths described by the Greeks show that the Amazons came from this region. Whom did the steppe Valkyries worship? The image of the sacred sword was quite common. And what was the location of this warrior kingdom? We dug out several such temples on Ustyurt, the land of Amazonia or the region of Sarmatia, daughters of the god of war and priestess of the serpentine goddess, mysterious statues of Mangistau and secret signs upon Greek vases, the Scythians. Where was the kingdom of the Amazons? Reflections on history, our version. Chapter 1. Female Secrets Burners roar industriously, and a huge, bright dome rises lazily to meet the sun. A little more, and the balloon is ready to conquer fabulous landscapes with legendary histories. Around the 7th century BC, somewhere in Cappadocia, the tale went roughly as follows. Herds of horses and flocks of sheep thinned out from the long and arduous road are somewhere ahead, pointing the way as though amidst a dusty cloud. Tall carts with wagons flash between the peculiar rocks. Two royal sons, heirs of the Scythian Saka leaders, journeyed here with their entourage in search of a better life. They were expelled from their native lands with their wives and children. From the legends of the Amazons. The legend outlined by the Roman historian Justin has a continuation, which is directly related to the Amazons. This is a loosely fictionalized retelling. At first, the exiles terrified the Cappadocians, but as a result of military conflicts, there were practically no men left. Struck by either grief or anger, the Scythian widows finished off the remaining soldiers, founded their own settlement, and began to live with no husbands at all. Many myths described by the Greeks show that the Amazons originated from this region. But in fact, such tribes could have lived in the northern Black Sea region and beyond. Greek and other ancient authors spoke of numerous places where the beautiful warriors had supposedly lived. Asia Minor, modern Turkey, is one of the most frequently cited locations. However, much more remote locations were explored, including those in Africa, Scythia and the Caucasus. Few people today can say exactly where the Amazonian communities could be found, on the territory of Kazakhstan, the Caucasus or Western Europe. Herodotus pointed to Sarmatia as the probable place where a tribe ruled by women existed. 
In the northern Caspian region, there is a circle of Sarmatian culture, including the Volga, Don, Ural, Central Kazakhstan, the Aral Sea region, Southeast Kazakhstan, Altai and Tuva. The fact is that the 7th to 8th century BC was the era of the Sarmatians. In general, the chronology of events raises many questions. Homer was the first to speak of the Amazons. In the legendary poems, a few scanned lines are devoted to the courageous warriors. However, the events at hand are those that took place in the 13th century BC, which is equally distant both for the poet himself and for the Sarmatians. However, the ancient Greeks say that Homer composed not only the Iliad and the Odyssey, he also wrote the land of the Amazons, though it has not survived. Today we cite Homer as though a piece of history, while it is also a work of fiction. This means that a person wrote about it after a lot of time had passed. And the list of those who have had a hand in writing these fantastical stories goes on. Herodotus wrote that a girl does not marry until she kills the enemy. Strabo said that they were mainly engaged in horse hunting and military exercises. Pompeius Trogus talked of representing a unique example for all the centuries when the Amazons decided to rule the state without men and even with contempt for them. There was also Hippocrates and Lysias. The list of ancient authors who wrote about the Amazons is a long one. From the standpoint of the Greeks, who were then known as having a civilized worldview, they found it amazing that a woman could take part in a war. And they were even more baffled as to whether there really was a state inhabited by women alone. Whom did the steppe Valkyries worship? Where did the Queen of the Amazons die? And what do the mysterious inscriptions hide? Chapter 2 – Celebrated in Legend Here it is once more, the advanced yet ancient Greek civilization majestic temples, palaces and sculptures. Antiquity can be seen in every stone. A 150 meter tall rocky hill is the main symbol of Athens, the Acropolis. It's been proven that precisely in this place there was one of the most ancient settlements on this territory in Athens. The city of Athens is at least 3,600 years old that is, if you also count the upper part of the Acropolis, since this is translated as the uppermost. Legend has it that it was founded by the first king of Athens, the heir to the two gods Gaia and Hephaestus. This small hill settlement had already become a city in the days of the legendary hero Theseus, which was around the 13th century BC. Theseus ruled wisely in Athens, but he did not live peacefully. He often left the city to take part in the exploits of the heroes of Greece. So, Theseus participated in the hunt for the Caledonian boar, in the quest of the Argonauts for the Golden Fleece, and in the campaign of Hercules against the Amazons. When Themyscira, the city of the Amazons, was taken, Theseus took Antiope, the queen of the Amazons, with him to Athens as a reward for her bravery myths and legends of ancient Greece. And Antiope became the wife of Theseus. The hero delighted in his marriage to the queen of the Amazons, but her warriors decided to take revenge on the Athenian ruler, since they believed their sovereign to be languishing in captivity. They gathered an army and attacked the Greek city. Today, this hill is frequented by tourists while in ancient times, according to one version of events, there was an Amazonian camp here from the time that they besieged Athens. And it was here that the Amazons made sacrifices to the god Ares. The Greeks themselves considered him, their ancient god of war, 
to be the progenitor of the Amazon warriors, which means that Ares was of Scythian and Saka blood. It was he who was worshipped in the form of a blade by the nomads. Huge mounds were erected in his honour only, with an Akinakis, the Scythian short sword, placed at their summit. The image of a sacred sword had been quite common in the steppe since ancient times. The Amazons were the most zealous adherents to this cult of the sword, but this time their rituals did not help them. Perhaps due to the fact that Antiope, one of the daughters of the god of war, fought on the Greek side. But for her, the raid by her fellow tribeswomen ended in tragedy. According to Aeschylus, Antiope, the queen of the Amazons and wife of the ancient Greek hero Theseus, died somewhere here. Allegedly, a tombstone was even laid in her honor at the gates of Athens. This sad tale and all the other episodes of the clashes between the Greek heroes and the heroines of the steppe did not simply remain in legend. One side of the Parthenon is dedicated to the battle between the Amazons with the Greeks. For the Greeks, this was something different, a novelty in comparison with the concept of how Athenian women should be. A whole range of antique art was born, known as Amazonomachy. When the Hellenes captured the struggle against these formidable warriors on vases, bas reliefs, and in sculptures. A clear pointer to the topic of the steppe Amazons is connected to the revelation of the secrets of inscriptions on Greek amphorae, of which about one and a half thousand items still exist. Scientists wondered why an incomprehensible series of letters had been written on the vases under the portraits of the Amazons, while the words Hercules or Achilles are perfectly legible. Some phrases were translated with the help of specialists in the ancient Caucasian languages. It turned out that these are the names, or rather the nicknames, of the warriors, which sound like worthy of armor, fiery, never retreat. However, so far, it has only been possible to decipher 12 inscriptions out of one and a half thousand. Here, most likely, it was necessary to turn to the experts of the Turkic runic inscriptions, because we're talking about the Sarmatians, about the Sakas, and so on. Let's get back to the topic of the Sarmatians, the tribe that the Amazons gave life to. According to Herodotus, captured by the Greeks, the warriors killed their kidnappers during a sea voyage, and when the ships ran aground on the Scythian coast, they began to steal cattle from the locals. The local people, of course, did not tolerate such wanton behavior and killed several thieves, only to discover that they were women. The Scythians then decided at the council not to kill any more women, but to send young men to them. The young men were to camp near the Amazons and do whatever the Amazons did. If the Amazons began to chase them, the men were to flee instead of engaging in battle. When the pursuit was over, the men were supposed to approach the Amazons again and set up a camp once more. The Scythians decided on this because they wanted the Amazons to bear their children. Herodotus, ancient historian. So they tamed the formidable warriors, and after a while, families started to appear. But the Amazons did not join the tribe, instead taking their young husbands in search of new lands. This is how, according to Herodotus, a new people appeared, the Savramats, or the Sarmatians. The myth of the Amazons, which was created by the Greeks, is no accident. Indeed, the Greeks, from the very beginning of their acquaintance with the Black Sea coast, met with women who fought like men. In principle, what Herodotus wrote is close to the truth. Where was the female kingdom located? What was the emblem of the Amazons? And what have archaeologists unearthed? Chapter 3 Stone Warriors Mangistau is at the junction of nine roads. 
These mountains have seen both medieval caravans and much more ancient nomadic crossings. For thousands of years, various peoples have moved across this expanse. Perhaps the realm of the Amazons was located here. The road to the winter camp had always thrilled her. Here, where it seemed like gods had competed to shape the rocks in ever more peculiar ways, a fresh wound prevented her from enjoying the landscape. In battle, she reached only to the shoulder of the enemy. However, she recalled that battle with pleasure. The foe had been startled, and then, with fleeting understanding flashing in his eyes, his last words were, husband killer. The Amazon spurred her horse and rushed on to the head of the convoy. From the legends of the Amazons. There was very little time left to reach the sanctuary. Ustjurt Plateau. We are now in the second half of the end of the first millennium BC. The Sarmatian era is much earlier. It was in the Iron or Early Iron Age. They stood near the temples of fire. There were temples like these. We dug several of them in Ostjurt. There was a hearth at the center of the stone temples, and there, in the hearth, there was a fire, and there was a hole, a domed structure. Around it, on the west side, there were statues of these armed soldiers. No similar round temples with stone guards have been found in any other country. Moreover, these findings expanded our understanding of the scale of the Sarmatian territory at this time, from the Urals to the Caspian Sea. Across a huge swathe of the territory of Eurasia, including modern Kazakhstan, and in particular the territory of western Kazakhstan, a lot of military graves of that period are found. It means that the Sarmatians attacked mainly from the west. Here was the starting point of their campaign. Today, more than a dozen monuments have been discovered on Ostjurt that belonged to the descendants of the Amazons. There are about a hundred stone statues, or rather fragments, of these ancient sculptures. This person is depicted in typical fashion, their legs, their hands, their grasp. These were important. This is a standard pose. It used to be said that only men who had died were entitled to a statue built in their honor. Now it is believed that women, and even those still living, had these kinds of monuments as a tribute so that the spirits of their ancestors would also manifest in this world. Among these are statues of women and ancient graffiti on the walls, including the image of a fish, a carriage, and a snake. In fact, the seal depicting two snakes is considered to be the emblem of the Amazons. Whose culture is peppered with these ripples? Of course, it can be traced to the Sarmatians. But then it gets to a point where it ceases. This is yet another confirmation of the legendary relationship between the Amazons and the Sarmatians. Perhaps this is the name of the Sanskrit Saurmat from Sarvmata, meaning mothers or women. Perhaps it was not even an ethnonym, but a characteristic name. Perhaps the names Amazons and Sarmats were used interchangeably. Thanks to these findings, some researchers believe that in the 3rd century BC there was indeed a female kingdom on this peninsula. Many legends about local warriors have also survived. A woman in the steppe wasn't only a mother and a homekeeper. There are also some sketches that show female archers shooting while on horseback. There are also legends about women who participated in the battles. The Karakalpaks have an epic called 40 Girls about a military detachment of Amazons. It is also possible that the wave-shaped sign is associated with the veneration of the serpentine goddess Api by the Amazons. 
She is also the foremother of the Scythians and the one who bore the children of Hercules. There is still a lot of work for archaeologists to do in Mangistau, and it's unknown how many more artifacts this ancient land will reveal. Abish Kekelbayev said, Nomadic peoples did not write books for the next generation. They wrote all their history and traditions on stones. History in stone, art and myth. All in all, these divine and heroic legends are considered to have damaged the reputation of the Amazons. Despite the huge number of images and citations in written sources, the Amazons have persistently been considered to be creatures of legend. Where were the legendary warriors found? Who put an end to the scientific debate? And what oath did the Amazons take? Epilogue Elegant Defenders The fact that the Sarmatians were not a figment of the imagination of Herodotus and other ancient historians has long been confirmed by archaeological discoveries. What of the Amazons? There are many female burials for which there is no anthropological doubt that these were women, and even the inventory indicates this. These women had weapons, including bows and other items, so women really were warriors in Scythian society. A few decades ago, graceful skeletons were found next to weapons. Scientists did not attribute the skeletons to women, but rather to young men. Some anthropologists, of course, tried to argue otherwise, but they were overruled by the authority of others. Then a version appeared that the Amazons were merely Sarmatians. Meanwhile, there were numerous findings far beyond the borders of Sarmatia. The burials of women with weapons are recorded in the Scythian and in the Sarmatian culture, so they are called Amazons. That is when a woman is laid to rest with a spear or with a bow. Some of them even had a short sword, known as the Akinakis, lying beside them. Geneticists put an end to the scientific dispute. An indisputable fact today is that nomadic women fought, hunted, rode on horseback and even served in the military. And they did not only do so in antiquity. In the old days there were always rifle groups in the villages. These were girl protectors. The reason why the Kazakhs could win in battles was because they had the most convenient, so to speak, protection, such as bows and arrows. The Amazons were girls. There even used to be a whole infantry squad of girls. Which is quite natural. Who else was supposed to take care of the safety of their people and territories while the men weren't around? In ordinary life there were situations where nomadic women dominated in battle due to the fact that the men went on long military campaigns or were somewhere in the pastures. This was quite possible. It is natural that the female half, when the male half died out in battle, had to stand up to defend their borders, their native land, family, children and older people. Burials of the steppe warriors were found as far afield as Britain. Female Sarmatian troops guarded the borders of the Roman Empire. The only thing that archaeologists did not find was the evidence of the existence of entire states where only women lived. This has yet to be confirmed. So much is connected to this stone. When still a child, she vowed to take revenge on her mother's killer. Next, she recalls her mother's stories about the place where her ancestors found refuge. And another flashback. Here, she herself speaks of the Hellens and the sea, and the last picture from her memory. The Queen of the Amazons, bowing her head by the stone, her revenge complete. From the legends of the Amazons.